I thought on this video I'd just show you something I'm currently working on so it's the 12th of October 2020 and I decided to do a really large lion now this is about 20 inches wide 18 inches high so I think it's probably about life size if not a bit larger and the last piece I finished was an oil which I did quite painterly so I wanted to do something completely opposite from that and to do something that I was I'm hoping to do extremely detailed as detailed really as I can do it and with pastels if you want to do something really detailed it always is a benefit to go larger because you can't sharpen the pencils as much and as finely as you can with um, colored pencils now I'm using my usual pastel matte paper I'm using a brown in this instance the brown is different enough from the lion not to cause confusion with the colors when I'm selecting my colors I thought going with the dark gray that would have worked as well but um, just thought the, the brown suited it better now the area I'm working on at the moment you can see I've just put an underlay down and I've done that mostly with pan pastels and also a little bit of um, soft pastel stick as well just to get the basic tonal value down on there and the basic color and then I'm coming in with my pencils adding the details on top the haze the little clumps of haze as well so it's important to go dark enough on the base layer that you can see these lighter haze going on top but you don't want to go so dark that you then can't attain the lightest of the light areas that you're going to put on top so you need a bit of experience to work out you know how dark is dark enough and how dark is is too dark and I've got videos plenty of videos showing how I um, navigate through that and how I've learned myself over the years what it gives the best um, result in the end and now notice when I'm doing these strokes they're not all regimented like soldiers in a row I'm making sure I've got a random uh, shape to them and that they're also going in the correct direction they're slightly overlapping each other I started with the ones furthest away on the right hand side and then started overlapping as I was coming in and that's exactly how they would have been on the animal if we was able to, to, to touch the fur in real life so it makes sense to do that as well now that's just a piece of glassine paper I'm using that's what the sheets of, of uh, pastel mat come interleaved with so I use that to rest my hand obviously just so I'm not smudging any of the work I've already done now the one thing I love to do when I'm doing my pastels is to use as many different colors or as many color variants in there that I can it's easy sometimes to uh, g get three or four colors that you're using frequently you keep them in your in your spare hand and you're just using them all the time and I find that the work in the end looks very boring very amateurish um, and by getting more colors little sh different shades different tints in there it really makes it a lot more interesting for the viewer and when I finished working on this one for the for the afternoon I'd been drawing on there for about an hour I looked in my my hand that holds the pencils and I had 15 pencils in there at that time and that's just working on this small area so you can see I get lots of different tonal values and lots of different colors in there as well now an important thing to think about when you're working very small or very very large like this is the actual thickness of the pencil marks that you're making they need to be of the correct scale now what I mean there is I've seen people do large drawings like this now you've seen professionals do large drawings roughly this size and it's obvious they've sharpened their pencils up to the absolute maximum sharpness they can get um, whether it's pastel or colored pencil and they've got all these minuscule little 
lines on there that's way way smaller than the fur or the hair thicknesses would have been in real life so it's as if they've gone a little bit blind to the reference they know his hairs they think that they need to go super super small and fine because hairs are so small but you know in actual fact when you're looking at the reference the hairs are not that thin when you're um, working really large so that kind of sharpening of the pencils may be great if you're doing your standard 16 inch portrait or something but like i said when you go very small you've got to make sure that the marks are small when you go large then i'm using as you can see quite blunt pencils i want the marks to be thicker larger i don't want all these tiny tiny little hairs on there i want this drawing even though i'm detailing it right up i want it to look like a drawing have a slight painterly um, look to it so that when you stand back 10 15 20 foot or more it looks very realistic but when then the viewer goes right up to it and almost puts a nose against the um, glass on the on the frame they can see all the pencil marks and see that it's not as detailed as they would at first think Just wanted to quickly mention my Patreon channel for those looking for even more in-depth art instruction. It's packed full of pastel videos, oil videos as well, and those videos are being added to new ones every single month. I have videos for the complete beginner that have never done pastels or oils before with just limited supplies. And I take you from the very first blocking in all the way through to the final detailed drawings and paintings. I've also got some really unusual subjects as well and in all of my videos I always take you through all the details you see everything I do how I create my work. But it's not just for beginners it's also for novices and I also show the best artwork that I've ever done as well and this particular elephant video spans six hours so you know you're going to see tons and tons of details tips and techniques and as mentioned i've got lots of oil videos on there too so there really is something for everybody and you get access to hundreds of hours worth of videos for just four dollars now over a thousand members strong hope to see you there soon now it's important when you've got areas such as the one i'm working on now that um you are able to get the, the vibrant bright colors that, that's required in that area now that means don't oversaturate the paper with your pastel pigment don't go put in real heavy strokes down early on you can see i've got some real darks in there as well that i'm weaving in between with my lighter pencil strokes now if you'd thought perhaps you should have gone really really dark in that area as black as you could and then keep layering the colors on top well that'll work up to a point but up to a point and beyond that point you'll find you won't be able to go light enough okay it's because the pastel that's in the base layer is always going to contaminate the pastel you put on top to some degree and if you want a line to be very very bright you don't want too much dark pastel or in fact any real dark pastel underneath it as you can see I'm just still building up that texture that fur texture remember in nature there's many many layers underneath the layers that we see on the surface and we create that in the drawing so that we've got that same appearance that realistic thickness of the fur and the hair on our flat surface on our flat paper and of course it's very very important to make sure your hair your fur marks are going in the correct direction you don't have to follow precisely what you're seeing in the reference photo 
here and through it's just too complicated to get it exactly right and th there's no need I'm just making sure it's going in the correct general direction now when I want a subtle mark I'm just pushing very lightly or putting very light pressure on the pencil when I want a more distinct more vibrant mark I'm using more pressure on the pencil and you see as well how after every stroke or two I actually rotate the pencil and see I do it quite quickly it's automatic now because I've done it so many times I rotate it and that stops me having a flat point on the pencil if I kept it in the same place in my hand all the time within two or three lines I'd have a flat edge on there which would gradually make it thicker and thicker in width you see if you look at the shaft of the pencil you see me rotate it in between the strokes so that's keeping that point quite cylindrical on the end obviously the pencil is wearing down all the time but because I'm doing that rotation I'm not getting the flat points on there now I've got loads and loads of videos over a hundred I think it is now on my patreon art channel and I go into a lot of depth on all of um, my different subjects and there's lots and lots of different subjects on there but I thought you may just like to see something that I'm currently working on just to see how I develop some of the smaller areas here I'm using a new pastel stick to get some nice punchy dark blacks in now the new pastels are hard and you can sharpen them with a blade to a nice chiseled edge or, or even a pencil point and as you can see the black is super black on there when I'm doing my patreon channel I don't hold any secrets back at all you see everything that I do now the eye on the lion is very very simple in this case I've put the black in already you can see I've left room on the paper where no black has been it's just pure paper and then I'm putting a blue down in there now the blue is obviously the reflection of the sky above the lion it looks really like a dead eye at the moment but as I said it's a very simple eye but if I'd put that black under the blue then when I put the blue on there it would have muddied and dirtied right up okay now we don't want that because you can't get it back then Now in the eye we've got some darker elements that's being mirrored into it and you can see just by softening the edge as well that's all of a sudden starting to give it a much more realistic appearance so even when you're doing something as simple as this you still got to study the reference photo you can't just wing it and think oh, I'll do it black with a little bit of blue you need to you know really study it and make it look realistic here I'm giving showing one of my tips when I want something to be super vibrant and bright like a bright white around it I usually put some vivid pink it just makes the white even whiter in appearance as you'll see when I put the white on next it really makes it zing and I just let a tiny bit of that pink show around the edge of the white once again my patreon channels are full of little tips like this that make I think you'll agree it makes a real difference now I'm just gonna touch up the blue a bit more add a little bit of a, a lighter color here and there and the eye really can be that simple but with that highlight in all of a sudden it gave it a glassy appearance so I hope you've enjoyed this short peek into my studio today and perhaps picked up a couple of tips as well if you are interested in uh, reference photos copyright free 
I've got a website I'll put at the end of this video which has got probably around about a thousand or more uh, photographs that you can paint and draw from and then sell your work with no worries whatsoever. Also on a different website I've got instructional DVDs and downloads and of course that Patreon channel as well if you want the most cost effective way of um, learning from me with lots and lots of different subjects. As I said there's about a hundred videos on there and from uh, four dollars a month so that's just a coffee or two you can get access to half of them and for all of the videos all different subjects that's just nine dollars a month. So once again hope you've enjoyed this little peek into the studio and I'll see you all again on the next video.